While the size, purpose, and format of meetings may differ, effective meetings always have the following elements in common. They are structured, intentional, collaborative, and inclusive. Let's study these elements in more detail. First, effective meetings are structured. This means they start and end on time, the attendees have been carefully selected, the meeting topics are prioritized, and the designated note taker has been assigned. Managing the meeting time and audience lets participants know that they're valued and appreciated. Remember that everyone's time is valuable. If someone's presence is unnecessary, you don't need to invite them to the meeting. Maybe you can share the notes. Include people who can contribute to the discussion and anyone who will be directly affected by the topics discussed. Structured meetings also have an agenda with prioritized topics. So the most important items are given appropriate attention. It's good to think about and set expectations for how long you expect the group to spend on a given topic. This is defined as time boxing, which just means you're setting a time limit for discussion. In a time box, you give each topic a buffer of a few minutes to make sure you're not overpacking your agenda. Keep the meeting time in mind and make sure you've scheduled enough time for the topic you need to cover. If there are several topics you need to address, consider scheduling a few shorter meetings with just one or two topics as their focus. After your first few team meetings, think about the pacing to know if you need to be more generous with the time given to each topic or if the group has time for a little more. If you get through your topics before your time is up, don't be afraid to call a meeting early. Everybody loves having their time back. Finally, a structured meeting should have a designated note taker, so you or anyone else can refer to the meeting notes later and find out what was discussed. The note taker could be you or another meeting attendee. For this reason, be clear about how, when, and to whom the meeting's outcomes are shared. Again, this all depends on the type of meeting you're having and who is attending. I'll loop back to describe some different types of project meetings in the next video. The next point to consider is that effective meetings are also intentional. This means they have a clearly stated purpose and expectations, which should be in the meeting agenda as well as the meeting invite, so everyone understands why they're attending. The agenda needs to set clear expectations for what needs to occur before and during a meeting. It helps attendees prepare, keeps everyone focused on the right topics, and clarifies meeting expectations and goals. The purpose of your meeting might be to make a decision, assign tasks, propose and vet an idea, or something else. Your meeting's purpose or goal describes the reason you're meeting and what you'd like to achieve. A well-designed agenda increases the group's ability to address problems and prevents wasting time. For example, you may be reviewing last month's business sales and setting goals for the next month. Maybe your group needs to choose coordinators for an upcoming event, or your goal could be to have your supervisor prioritize a list of tasks. The purpose might change from meeting to meeting, or it could say the same. If input is needed by attendees, be sure to send any pre-reading materials in advance of the meeting so that everyone shows up prepared to participate. Depending on the purpose, meetings can be formal or informal, have as few as two or three group members, or have hundreds of attendees. Whatever it is, make sure you state a clear, thoughtful purpose and strive to achieve that purpose by the end of the allotted time. Another element of effective meetings is encouraging a collaborative environment. Collaboration is when people work together to produce or create something. There are lots of ways to make your meetings collaborative, even if the purpose is for one person to share important information with the rest of the group. One easy way to do this is to be sure the agenda isn't just full of presentations where participants are talked at. Be sure the agenda is clear about the objectives of the session. Will a decision be made? Or is the session for information and discussion? Second, have a digital shared meeting document and encourage participants to write any comments or thoughts directly in the document. But more importantly, remind them that the notes will be shared. This encourages active listening and participation in real time during the meeting. Last, it's important to respect and embrace each individual's preferred communication style, even in meetings, especially in collaborative meetings. Let folks know they're welcome to respond verbally, through the chat, in the meeting notes, or in any other format you'd like to include.
The final element of an effective meeting is that it's inclusive. Inclusivity is the practice or policy of including people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. When it's done well, inclusion leads to excellent collaboration, ensuring that every participant's contributions are valued. As a project manager, you play a critical role in ensuring that meeting attendees feel supported and included. So offering additional resources for ways to participate is helpful. For both in-person and virtual meetings, consider appointing a meeting moderator or facilitator. This person will guide the meeting and help participants ask questions in real time while someone else is presenting. This way, the presenter can stay focused on their topic while the moderator pays attention to the participants and can help guide participants on when they can chime in. It's also a good idea to leave space in the meeting for participants who've been quiet. At the close of a topic or before the meeting ends, you might consider going around the room once in a while and asking each person to comment on a particular issue or question. I like to call this a final flight check before everyone takes off and goes their separate ways. A key component of inclusivity is ensuring that your meetings and presentations are accessible. Another thing to consider is the level of internet access when conducting virtual meetings. For those without strong internet access, provide a phone dial-in option. Most online meeting tools, including Google Meet and Zoom, have this option. Let participants know it's okay to turn off their cameras if they need to improve the connection or adjust the video quality. Focusing on inclusion helps build a sense of belonging and serves as a reminder that we live in a world with many different kinds of people. Creating a meeting space where people of different views, backgrounds, and experiences can do their best work and be there for one another is key. These tips aren't exhaustive by any means, but hopefully they can be useful to start empowering others to meaningfully join in and contribute. When done right, meetings can be incredibly useful communication tools. That's why it's important to be purposeful when designing meetings that are structured, intentional, collaborative, and inclusive. This will earn you a reputation for running efficient, inclusive, successful meetings where everyone feels appreciated, which is great for your project and your career. Now that you've learned the key components for organizing and facilitating an effective team meeting, we'll explore the specifics of some of the most common types of meetings you'll need to have during a project. Every project has meetings, lots of meetings. While every meeting is unique, being familiar with the most common types of project management meetings will help you better identify the goals, structure, and activities best suited for each one. There are four general types of project management meetings project kickoff, status updates, stakeholder reviews, and project reviews. The first one we'll talk about is the project kickoff meeting. This is often considered the official beginning of a project and serves as a way to align the team's understanding of the project goals with actual plans and procedures. Members of your team are the major attendees of your kickoff meeting, but the participation of senior management and key stakeholders is also required for securing buy-in and ensuring alignment with project goals. The next type of meeting we'll discuss are status update meetings. Status update meetings are one of the most common types of meetings. This category includes regular team meetings where the primary goal is to align the team on updates, progress, challenges, and next steps. During the meeting, the project manager may distribute or present project performance reports and formal status updates on key elements of the project. This allows the team and stakeholders to gain visibility into current performance levels and task progress. One of the project manager's key responsibilities is to be aware of the status of the project at any given time and to ensure that others are up to speed or know where to find the latest information. In order to do that, status updates become a critical tool throughout the life cycle of a project to check in on the project. Typically, you'll assess the status of each of the following topics during this meeting. First are task updates. It is important for the attendees to know what is the status of the most urgent tasks, how many tasks have been completed, and how many open items remain. Next is schedule status. Are we behind schedule? ahead of schedule, or on pace with our projections. Similarly, it's common to discuss the budget status and any new items that impact your bottom line. Then, you should discuss current or anticipated issues. 
For example, changes, risks, resource issues, vendor issues, and so on. Particularly changes to quality and scope. It's always a good idea to raise these items on a recurring basis so that no one is caught off guard and you can discuss solutions together. Lastly, you'll want to discuss action items. An action item is a task on your list that needs to be completed. Assigning action items is a great way to wrap up the meeting and make sure the project keeps forging ahead. Remember, every action item has an owner and a due date. The status meeting is a fundamental project tool that keeps the project on track. Most project managers recommend using a relatively fixed agenda and time with this meeting. To keep the team engaged, follow the agenda and hold the meeting to a tight schedule. Because the project manager should be able to report up-to-date information to the project sponsors or clients at any time, it's important to conduct status meetings regularly. Status meetings are beneficial because they provide an opportunity for recognizing milestones, sharing information, and raising concerns to the team. How often you decide to schedule these meetings depends on several factors, such as the project's complexity, number of team members, and the level of information required by the project sponsor, clients, or others. Don't be afraid to change up the cadence as your project progresses. Another type of project management meeting is a stakeholder meeting. Stakeholder engagement is essential for successful project management. The goal of a stakeholder meeting is to get buy-in and support. Stakeholders each have their own set of tools, know-how, and expertise. Stakeholder meetings are where these contributions are outlined and utilized. You'll need to start by understanding a stakeholder's challenges or problems, then respond accordingly and make necessary adjustments to resolve those challenges. Winning and sustaining the support of your stakeholders is important to your project's success. In some cases, you might want to have stakeholder meetings on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This allows you to dive deeper on relevant details with each stakeholder. Then you can cover the topics that are most interesting and concerning to that particular person. Other times, you'll need to engage stakeholders in groups. If you have a large number of stakeholders to manage, focus the meeting on your project's most influential stakeholders. Identify appropriate stakeholders for high-touch communication. For example, you may focus the meeting on senior managers from each of the groups you need to engage. Other stakeholders can be informed using other methods, such as email or meeting notes. While there are a number of potential topics to cover when meeting with stakeholders, most meetings are limited to communicating critical information. You should always be able to present a project update. Start the meeting with a short overall project status update of two to five minutes. Another key reason to meet with stakeholders is to seek out and listen to feedback. Or you might meet with stakeholders to make a decision or resolve a major issue surrounding your project. In this case, you'll often meet with senior leaders and the project sponsor. Decisions could include go or no-go decisions, a choice between options, or signing off on investments. Stakeholder meetings are generally more formal. It's normal to prepare reading materials and documents to review ahead of time to help get people in the right mindset for the meeting. Stakeholder meetings can be regular and recurring or just a one-off project meeting. The frequency will depend on why the stakeholder is involved in the project. Are they playing an advisory role, such as a consultant in a RACI, or just someone to inform and keep in the loop? Does their involvement center around just one activity on the project, or do they need to stay involved on a longer-term basis? You'll need to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. The end of the project, or the end of the project phase, is an excellent opportunity to review how the project unfolded. This is called a retrospective. A typical retrospective meeting agenda includes reviewing lessons learned about what's going well, what you should keep doing, and what can be improved. Equally important to reviewing lessons learned is taking the opportunity to celebrate the project's success. Knowing the difference between these project meeting types allows you to maximize productivity and ensure that you're not wasting time. You'll get the right outcome from each type of meeting, which will help drive decisions and lead to proactive, positive action.